Hello heathens and welcome to my channel. I am Beauty Heathen and my channel is dedicated to the exploration of paganism. Sometimes I do readings, sometimes I do educational content through the medium of cosmetics. Um, heck, I still have some already painted heads next to me <laughs> that I have to clean. And sometimes, like today, I go into demonstrations, sometimes it's of ritual work, sometimes of, it's of um, ingredients or other aspects of paganism that I feel can either be done at home and usually for a lot less money than if you were to buy them yourselves. So that's what today is about and why you're staring at a pad of paper, which I flipped upside down for a reason. If you have not done so already and you are enjoying my content, I would be so, so grateful if you wouldn't mind hitting like, subscribe, be sure to comment down below, let me know how you, if you like my videos. If you have any constructive criticism, whatever. I'm not going to bite your head off. And lastly, please be sure to set that bell to all to be notified of when I release new videos. So, I'm sure based off of the thumbnail, you're wondering what in the world is she talking about today? Well, I've mentioned in many videos up until this point about smoke cleansing and cleansing your tools, cleansing your space, cleansing your home, all those kinds of things. Well, one thing I haven't mentioned yet to my recollection, I could be wrong, but I don't think I have, is something to substitute for that process. A lot of people live in apartment buildings. A lot of people cannot be around smoke and ha breathe that in, especially if you happen to be going through <clears throat> respiratory ailments that shall remain nameless on my channel right now because <laughs> YouTube is pulling things down if you even remotely mention things lately. But, um... A very good substitute to actually doing smoke cleansing or smudging is your own version of smudge spray. Now you can look all over the internet. You can look for different directions here and there and find a number of recipes and guidance on how to make smudge spray and everything. Many of them are going to suggest you buy essential oils. Many of them are going to give you guidance on different ways to make them. And I'm sitting here to tell you that you don't need to do any of that. As somebody who has made my own smudge spray and many times with my best friend, when I haven't been able to, she's made it for me. There is a much easier process and for not that much money, you can make a ton of smudge spray for your own house. All you need is an empty spray bottle like you would put cleaner or something in. If it's had cleaner in it before, make sure it's well cleaned out, washed out, there's no chemical residue in it if you want to reuse it, or I'm sure you can get um, inexpensive spray bottles at the dollar store. Um, and I recommend, this is one of the few areas where I'm actually going to say I recommend buying a gallon of spring water, like Poland Spring or a brand that is actual spring water, not like tap water that's been mucked with like Aquafina or Dasani. It's not 
preferred if you can't afford to do that if things are really tight right now go ahead and use tap water just do the best you can another thing that you will need to buy if you don't have it already is witch hazel other than that the world is your oyster and now we will go into the how to's all you really want to get is a big pot, put the water in it. If you are able to, before you even start this process, if you buy the water early during the full moon phase, you might want to leave the gallon of water in a window to be charged by the moon, at least for three days, the day before, the day of, and the day after the new moon, uh, sorry, full moon. <laughs> and then use that to make the smudge spray now i'm going to show you a little link here or not link but screenshots here of a number of smudge spray products you can buy from a number of sources the ones that i'm linking here happen to be on amazon and as you can see they generally range anywhere from 13 dollars upwards to 25 or 30 dollars and usually the spray bottle of that you get is let's see how many ounces of this a lot okay um i'm trying to they're generally a little bit bigger than this they look like a small spray bottle that you would spray things with and so it usually has anywhere from two to four ounces of smudge spray in it for anywhere from 13 to 25 dollars it's insanity to me so after you've charged your gallon of water get a big pot you want to pour and dump the water in the pot seems pretty easy now, don't get essential oils. You don't need them. And what does oil and water do? They separate. So every time you go to use a smudge spray, you're going to be shaking and shaking and shaking, hoping that you'll get some of the essential oils to spray everywhere. But the likelihood that they actually emulsify and you get much up the air aerator I forgot what that particular aspect is the pump spray <laughs> it's slim to know the main things you're going to need are salt preferably sea salt but if not use table salt now you want to think about the purpose of your smudge spray. Do you just want it for cleansing or do you want it to be multi-purpose and not just act to clear out negative things, but attract good things to you simultaneously? Um, another thing that you need to buy is witch hazel. It's fairly inexpensive. I would just get a bottle of it anywhere from 12 to 16 ounces for the gallon that you're making. Now keep in mind you'll need something to put this gallon in. Maybe a gallon mason jar. Just make sure you prepare ahead so you have somewhere to put the water so you're not designating a huge pot to a gallon of smudge spray for however long it takes to get through it and again you don't have to do a gallon this is just me advising you how to make a big batch at one time that can last you for a year or two depending on how frequently you use it personally I have taken a cleaning bottle of this to my workplace and about once a month I go around and I spray around the office 
just to clear out any uh, weird energy or anything of that nature. And I've had it for three years and it's barely half full, empty. So, I mean, it can last you a very long time. And you will get a lot more product for a lot less money. I would say, at most, it, sorry, <laughs> at most, if you spend, for what you would spend for one single bottle of smudge spray on this entire batch, I'd be surprised. Because a gallon of water, you want to look at like three bucks. Typically, everybody has salt in their house already. It's not anything fancy. Which hazel, as I saw, was like six bucks at Ulta. And many of the herbs that I have written down a vast number of, people generally have already in their house. Now, there are more herbs than what I've written down. And by all means, if none of the herbs and spices that I have listed here feel right for you, feel free to just pop up Google and type in magical herbs for and put down the purpose. And generally it will spit out a number of links for you to reputable witchy resources to find lists of herbs and what their designated purposes are. Now, when it comes to smudge spray, the first thing you want to do is cleanse. Get rid of the gunk, get rid of the icky energy that you don't want hanging around. So, I've written down a number of herbs. One is cedar, which is, when it comes to the Native American practice of smudging. Cedar is one of their four primary herbs that they use during that ceremony. Then you have cypress, goldenrod, juniper, lavender, mullen, rosemary, which is usually something we all have in the house, thyme, white pine, and you can do white sage or garden sage. Again, I'm not a gatekeeper. There are many indigenous people who are not happy if you are not Native American and you use white sage. I will give you my strong advice that if you do buy white sage, find a reputable resource where it is from the indigenous community where you know it's being cultivated respectfully and properly and it helps support the indigenous community. That's my advice if you are to buy white sage. Don't buy it off Amazon because you have a lot of um, these corporate growers who are harvesting the wild white sage and causing it to become endangered and less available for indigenous people who live in that region. So that's why I'm bringing that to your attention. But if you don't have or don't feel right about using white sage, there's always garden sage. They serve the same purpose. So that's to clear out the gunky energy. Now let's talk about protection. Say you want protection for the space. There's a number, a lot of herbs. Again, this is just a small listing. And you will see a lot of crossovers from list to list. Protection, Angelica, Basil, Bay, Rosemary. Now, for the purposes of smudge spray, I would not do garlic because you don't really want that smell lingering around. And I might advise against ginger for the same purpose. 
but you also have cinnamon, clove, allspice, all spice, and sage. For prosperity, because who can't use a little bit of prosperity coming in and blessing your space and blessing your home with? Allspice, angelica, basil, bay, chamomile, calendula, clove, dill, and marjoram. Now an interesting little factoid. If the use of sage is a big no-no for you, the herbs thyme and marjoram work together in the exact same way as if you were to use white sage and sweet grass, which is another sacred herb used by indigenous tribes in the ceremony of smudging. They work together hand in hand. Time cleanses out, marjoram brings in good. So keep that in mind when you're making the smudge spray, that time and marjoram, if you have those two, I recommend throwing them in because they do work hand in hand. Now, okay, we have cleansing, protection, prosperity. What else could we use? Well, let's bring some good health to us. So we have astragalus, sorry, astragalus, <laughs> I always mispronounce that, blessed thistle, syncofoil, comfrey, eucalyptus, nettle, peppermint, pine, and funny how witch hazel is on that list. Witch hazel serves two purposes, which I will get to the second purpose. But if you want health, you're already including it in the recipe. You can use just witch hazel, or if you don't have peppermint herb, you can always throw in a couple tea bags of peppermint tea, if you have the tea bags. Same goes for if you have chamomile tea, if you don't have the loose herb, which by the way makes a huge mess when boiled. And I will get to that whole process in a moment. But say you also want to bring love. You have rose, pink or red, lavender, which also is a cleansing herb, bay, which is also good for protection and prosperity. See what I'm saying here? You don't have to use a lot of diverse herbs. You can literally choose two or three herbs and have them cover pretty much every single one of these purposes. But other love herbs or resin, in this case, is dragon's blood, patchouli, sandalwood, rue. Now, an interesting thing about rue is it is also a very strong herb for prosperity. Then you have High John the Conqueror and mugwort. All of these herbs are multi-dimensional. All of these herbs have multiple purposes. So pick and choose as you will. Whatever is easiest for you. Say you don't have a lot on hand, but say you have maybe some rosemary and some green or garden sage in the cabinet. Go ahead and pick that out. Keep in mind though that when you're making this, you want to be able to fish the herbs out. So try to keep that in mind when you're making this. It's better to get the whole herb and put it in either several folds of cheesecloth or if you have been fancy and bought a bag to make your own nut milk, put it in there. You want something to contain the herb so that when this is finished steeping, you're making a literal herb tea, not to drink. <laughs> um, you can fish out the herb so that when you're spraying the home or anything, you don't have a lot of herbs getting into the um, tube so it doesn't clog it up. You know what I mean? So, as you will, mix and match the herbs for what you want. Put the herbs in something, 
again. <laughs> uh, could even be a coffee filter. If you have coffee filters, just make sure it's well sealed and maybe um, stitch it a little bit at the top and leave it hanging over the edge so that it's not fully pulled under so that water isn't getting into the top and pulling herbs out of it. Um, but you want to put whatever it is you choose in something that can be pulled out. When you have the water heated up, it doesn't have to be a rolling boil, but where it's a lot of water, you may want to put it on high for a while because you want to get it fairly hot like you would as if you were making tea. Put the bundle of herbs in the pot to steep. It may take 30 minutes to an hour to properly steep, but at the end you'll have a very, very strong and potent um, smudge spray. Now when it's hot, you also want to throw in the salt because salt is also a purifier, but it also serves multi-dimensional purpose. When it comes to preserving things and making sure that they don't, you know, grow mold or anything of that nature, salt is a good ingredient to add. You don't need to add a lot of it, especially because you're adding in the witch hazel. Witch hazel isn't just an herb for health and drawing good health. It's also a very strong um, preservative that's natural. So you're not having to put anything artificial or anything chemical in this. Witch hazel will serve both for the drawing health and to help preserve your liquid because especially where you're not going to use it up very quickly this way you ensure that it doesn't grow mold it's free of microbes it's free of um, any kind of nasty stuff that you know if you have ever made like soup or anything if you leave it for long enough it starts growing stuff and you don't want that <laughs> You don't want that at all, especially when it comes to doing something like this. So definitely put in some salt, definitely put in witch hazel. When I looked up a recipe to make smudge spray, they recommended, I think it was a tablespoon for two or four ounces of fluid. So if you're doing a gallon, that comes out to be about 16 ounces, but I think 12 ounces would be more than enough. Um, for a recipe like this but yeah this way you can make your own smudge spray it's going to last you a very very long time maximum I would say for the things that I mentioned you could get away with maybe 10 bucks so don't waste your money on what other people are trying to sell. You don't have to do that. If you want to go a step further, on top of the things that I've already mentioned, and you want to add crystals to your recipe, you can put in clear quartz. It's fairly inexpensive. Um, black tourmaline, maybe put in a crystal for each purpose if you want to. Um, but here's the one time I'll actually say you may actually want to put in selenite because it decomposes and disintegrates in water. And this way you have selenite charged smudge spray. And the purpose of selenite is to cleanse and charge. So it serves also that purpose to make sure that your smudge spray has a cleansing and charging, stays charged with the purpose 
substances that you select the, the herbs for. So I hope this has been relatively easy to follow. I do hope one day when I'm able to and in sort of my own space that I'll actually do a physical demonstration of this and remake this video at some point. But <laughs> for now, things are what they are and um, I'll do a close-up of The list so that if you guys want to screenshot anything you can hopefully the video is not reversed so it's not backwards but anyway I hope this has been helpful in some way um, especially to those of you who may be displaced right now or to those of you who live in buildings where you can't smoke cleanse or anything of that nature um, and if you have any requests for things you'd like to see, if you have any requests for, um, content you would like me to make, please go ahead and let me know in the comments below. And before you go, please be sure to like, subscribe, set that bell to all to be notified of when I release new videos. And until next time, I wish you the brightest of blessings and blessed be. Bye.